And if there's anything I ever do that's shitty, that irks you, communicate that with me. Let me know these things. Convenient excuse segue! <laughs>
that I've ever tried to hide. In fact, my mom will be the first person to tell you that I was a terrible person. Bringing your mother into it, huh? Classy. Ah yes, I know, when I want an unbiased breakdown of whether or not someone is a potential threat to minors, there's always one peer-reviewed source I can count on. Their mother. I was a liar, a cheater. I was a giant man whore in my past. I tried to see multiple women at the same time. A terrible friend? Absolutely. But do I think I'm any of those things anymore? No, I really don't. Am I any of the other things that people are saying about me? Absolutely not. This is likely Destry's means of controlling the narrative. He confesses to what he claims to be the only true allegations, conveniently none of the ones in which he breaks the law, but are any of us really surprised by that? It's always how it goes. And then firmly states that any allegations outside of what he's just confessed to are false. Again, not stating what they are. Being a liar, cheating on your partner, excessive flirting, and being a shit friend are not crimes. And realistically, outside of cheating, almost anyone can be accused of this. Say Saying I was bad and did these things that a bunch of other people do in my past isn't exactly much of a confession. Not only that, but Destry then tries to separate himself from these what, faux allegations, by saying that's not him anymore. So despite saying that he wants to take accountability, he then distances himself from his confessions by saying that he's no longer those things he's confessed to, thus not taking accountability. You'll also notice that all of what he's confessing to here has to do with personal relationships. You know, those relationships we generally feel should be kept private and not the business of the public. Sort of implying that it's not our business in the first place. Yeah, slick there. However, I am constantly sorry about the person that I was, and I'm constantly saying sorry for the person that I was. Show it, you coward! I was constantly trying to distance myself from the person that I used to be even five years ago. Except some of these allegations aren't just from five years ago. Some of them are more recent. If someone did something bad in the past that they continue to do to this day, it doesn't matter if they claim they're trying to distance themselves from their past actions, their present day actions say otherwise. And truthfully, I think I've come a long way. I mean, depending on how long you've watched me on this channel, I'm sure you can see the same thing about me and my content. I am not the same person I was 12 years ago when I started my first channel. You, my fan watching, you know I'm not a bad person, right? This is appealing to the parasocial relationship between Destry and his fans. That even being said, the allegations focus on behavior that would have been executed behind the scenes and they're an outside of the purview of his fans. If fans have been unaware of that behavior, then what is presented to them through the videos, both past and present, means nothing. If true, it would demonstrate that these were already actions that Destry would have been able to hide and that the audience perception of him is flawed. Any change perceived over those 12 years is called into question if those behaviors persist in the background over that time frame, which, as of recording, is a very real possibility. But that's not the point here. The point here is that Destry is basically leaning in close to the mic and going, you know I didn't do this, baby. You know me better than that. Which, again, given his content and what he's accused of, shouldn't be fucking surprising. And I'm grateful for that fact. I've made friends. I've lost friends. I've made lovers. I've lost those lovers. I've I've made constant mistakes. I've failed dozens of times. But each one of those things was a lesson that made me who I am today and less of the person that I used to be and the qualities that I hated about myself. Ignoring that it's alleged that some of those lovers were underaged, I guess, none of this has anything to do with the allegations. Destry is not being accused of being a bad friend. He's being accused of grooming children and many other illegal acts that tend to be paired with that accusation. This is ridiculous. Okay, that's not entirely true. Yes, technically he's being accused of being a bad friend, but that's paired with much more serious allegations, like the one that accuses him of having a collection of nude photos saved for blackmail, which may or may not include CP. Point is, there are way more serious, life-ruining allegations being thrown around here, and focusing exclusively on literally the least concerning ones is weird. Why are correcting these way more serious allegations not one of your priorities? Whatever I was. I'm not that person anymore. If you didn't think he was trying to distance himself from it before, I'm not that person anymore is generally the line that kicks that benefit of the doubt in the gut. That said, I am still human. Uh, those aren't the last mistakes I'll ever make. And if there's anything I ever do that's shitty, that irks you, or I make you uncomfortable, or you think that I step over the line, 
Communicate that with me. Let me know these things. Thanks for the get out of jail free card on this video. Ay. Because another thing to note is that my brand is sexual jokes. My brand is weird, creepy humor. It's always been that way and it will probably always be that way. Uh, it's just who I am and that's presumably why you started watching me in the first place. Making a sex joke in a video is not the same thing as sexting a minor. Destry is not being condemned for the content of his humor. He's being accused of saying and exchanging inappropriate sexual content with minors, it's just that his style of humor has specifically been pointed out as demonstrating red flags. He's not in hot water because he made sex jokes in public videos. He's being boiled because he's allegedly engaged sexually with minors in private DMs. One is a public action and one is a hidden action. Guess which one is actually bad and then, in turn, guess which opposite one Destry is connecting himself to. I make sex jokes a lot of the time, especially in my Ponder Sprocket videos because flirtatious sexual humor is a part of that character. Shockingly, the sex jokes from my videos don't just suddenly manifest in private DMs. This is what we like to call a straw man. Destry is being accused of being sexual with minors and his sexual humor is brought up as a red flag. He then craps and implies the false argument that people are claiming the humor itself is what's bad, not that it merely hints towards these patterns. Destry argues this because it's easier for him to then look like the victim. Obviously, anybody who watches Destry's content isn't going to have a problem with sexual humor and are, again, obviously going to agree with him when he says his brand of humor isn't an issue. Because it's not, and he knows it, although the audience he's directing it to probably is the issue here. Then, much like how he's been hiding the broad overview of the allegations, he then doesn't have to discuss the context in which this quote-unquote weird, creepy humor was an issue. He simply implies it's within the context of his videos when it's blatantly not. But I would still like to be told when something I do cross is a boundary, whether that be something I say in a video or something that is proven to be true about me as a person. Subtle overemphasis on proven there, huh? And with any accusation, normally in an ideal world, you are innocent until proven guilty, but I have only ever seen it to be the opposite. Anyone online is always guilty until proven innocent, and I can't support that idea. And as such, I know that a ton of people have already made up their minds about this situation, and even if I was to explain context of some of the things being said about me, not only would it not help people's image of me, but it would also be dragging someone else's name to the mud. And that is just something I can't do. You won't believe me, so I won't even try. Despite Destry having talked before about how there's two sides to every story, he's already hidden one side of the story in this video, that being the accusers, obviously. At this point here, he's saying that the reason he's not revealing his side of the story is because we already have preconceived notions that he's guilty. Notice how all of a sudden it's our fault that he's not releasing the con Context. It's not a choice he's making that doesn't make sense because it actively harms his narrative. It's him taking the bullet and dealing with the unjustified hate because people are too judgmental. The video compiling the accusations hasn't even been made yet. Most videos from what I've seen were kind of waiting on a response from Destry. And he's got his defeatist mentality that the world has already decided he's irredeemable because people who have had past interactions with him have spoken up about it. I'm sorry, so what was the purpose of this video? To state that the these sides exist, but that he's not going to tell his audience either and that they should just ignore it because people outside of Destry's audience are judgmental haters who just want to see Destry fall? Yeah, basically. Great. It would be one thing if one person came out with allegations of misconduct and the accuser denied it because in that situation it's just two opposing parties, either of whom could be lying or telling the truth. However, when multiple people come out with similar corresponding or even matching allegations, it becomes less and less likely that the individual accusations are all presented without merit. Even if it exonerates me and everything is great but it was at the expense of someone else being thrown under the bus, I just won't do it. Ah yes, my favorite. I have receipts to clear my name, but I'm not going to reveal them. Given that the majority of the accusations have to do with the sexual exploitation of minors, what would this hypothetical other person be thrown under the bus for? The same thing? Are we therein to theorize that Destry believes he has evidence that would clear his name but reveal somebody else's nefarious actions, and that's what he's choosing not to reveal? Or would this throw the accuser under the bus, in the sense that the proper context reveals the falsity of their claims, and he's not gonna reveal that? 
You see why none of this really works? So I understand that some of you won't accept that answer and uh, if this is where we say goodbye, I understand. Just know that I feel blessed to have been in your life at all. I decided to dress up as a failure at life. Didn't have to change that much. But to those who choose to continue to grow with me, just know that I will continue to distance myself from the piece of shit that I used to be. I have been and I will continue to strive every day to be the best version of myself. And as I said, if I ever slip up or you feel like I fail, communicate that with me. Also, really quick, I do wanna say I disabled comments on this video uh, simply to prevent people from fighting in the comments. The last thing I want to do is to spread any more negativity than has already been spread, so please understand the purpose in that decision. Mind you guys, the thing that people would be fighting about here would be the allegations themselves and the validity of them. Since Destry already stated himself that people apparently already consider him to be guilty and that the context wouldn't change their minds, we can already guess that the negativity he's talking about in the comments Section would be negativity directed toward him. He's just inadvertently admitted that he's removed comments to stop people from being negative towards him. Careful, Destry. Looks like beyond four minutes you start slipping. That said, feel free to reach out to me. Um, if you do choose to reach out to me, please make sure it is one of the links in the description down below of this video. My previous two Snapchats were hacked and on both occasions I reached out to Snapchat to see what could be done and apparently nothing could be done about it. So for safety reasons, yes, please don't contact anyone saying that me that isn't uh, one of the links in the description down below. I don't have a kick. I don't have a public phone number. I've posted tweets and Instagram stories uh, at least twice a year for the last several years that this has been going on, uh, mainly for everyone's safety, but also because I've seen some terrible shit come of that. So that being said, thank you for listening and for giving me a chance to be heard. Oh, how convenient. What was one of the platforms he was accused of sexting minors on? Snapchat? Yeah. Just kick one of them? Whatever. Just shove in that little tidbit at the end so your audience can once again fill in the gaps and assume that any questionable Snapchat DMs that might arise are the result of a hacked account. Especially since Destry has already told them that any accusations outside of lying, cheating, being a man whore, and a bad friend are totally untrue. Remember when I said I was gonna wait to hear more when I had learned about the allegations? Because yeah, as of right now, they are just allegations. So all we really have to go on is that notion paired with Destry's own actions after their release, which was, you know, to private all of his social media accounts and start deleting things. As you do. I don't know about you guys, but uh, yeah. I know what I think about the situation now, and Destry's response was what got me there. I've seen a lot of liars in my days, and I'm not entirely sure that Destry's as on top of curbing that behavioral problem as he likes to claim he is. This video may have been short, but it wasn't sweet. It was, incidentally, something that irked me, and I've apparently got the green light to ramble on about that, so here we are. Everything said in this video, if you think about them for more than two seconds, makes zero licks of heckin' sense. If the allegations are completely without merit, it, why can't he mention what they are? Why all the deflection if he wants to take accountability? Why the straw manning? Why the blame games? Why the refusal to save his own skin? Why the bringing up of his mom as an emotional playing card like some manipu baby man child? Look at all this shit he gave us. You see why I figured this video was such an appropriate collection of these tactics? It's like a diorama of dumb. If Destry's alleged evidence could actually throw someone else under the bus and he was wary of that, I don't think he'd even reveal that to us. Why would you talk about that being a factor if you didn't want that to be revealed to the public. If you were smart, you wouldn't even mention it because mentioning it brings it to everyone's attention. It inadvertently casts doubt on any person other than Destry and since these are private DMs he's being accused of engaging in, then it's not hard to surmise the people he's claiming would be thrown under the bus are the alleged victims. I mean, unless he had an accomplice, immediately making them look suspicious because, oh, if Destry reveals this, they would be in trouble. If the alleged victims were lying, then throwing them under the bus should really not be an issue here. What additional context could there be that throws someone under the bus without having it be the victims and I guess makes, uh, exonerates Destry? It's almost like this is all the point. I will be perfectly fair with you all and say that yes, a good chunk of the allegations at the moment are just allegations, I and mean, basically all of them are, and some of them, even just hearing them, it's blatantly obvious that there's no means of proving what they claim, and it's, in that regards, basically unfounded and completely out of left field, at least to us as those completely uninvolved. But in that unfounded reality, I sort of expect someone to be able to point out that these are totally baseless and unfounded because they wouldn't expect to be accused of it. In situations where someone doesn't argue a baseless unfounded and completely out of left field claim, 
well, I start to wonder whether they'd been expecting it. So yeah, I think he's totally lying out of his arse. But that's just my take on the matter, based on Destry's fucking it up for himself. How do you guys feel about the matter? Are there other red flags in this short video that I missed out on? If so, we can all discuss it in the comments and have a laugh. And of course, to tie off the video and cleanse our minds of the dumb, we take a moment to enjoy some beauty in the form of magnificent art- the, the, the magnific uh, magnificent artwork that you guys have made! Ha! We'll start things off relaxed with a warm-up sketch of a hot lady by MattyJK96, put in a cool outfit with a drink and ready to enjoy some of that summer weather we're all probably missing right about now. Choose your fighter, Ponder or B by Clockwork Cryptid, making a confident could definitely crush you Octomama, and then me getting crushed. And yes, that does appear to be an accurate height difference. <laughs> Speaking of crushing, blah blah blah, segue into Ponder Sprocket crushing this style in this beautiful, humble offering by Fluffy Wave, or I guess the older watermark name, which is hella funny, the glorious, glammy fashion. Ugh. Next, we have Ponder Sprocket as, uh, your bride, I guess, by Hermes Carrero. Come here and kiss the bride, big boy, she says as though that outfit doesn't say all you need to know already. There's more fun to be have if y'all wanna play Twister by Put Your Flesh Back On. And I know he looks inconspicuous here, but I promise you, Fiend knows he's going to win. Look at him. He knows. We've got some soft and fancy maid babes by Clown Teeth, who's drawn Stem, Ponder, and Fiend as a whole bunch of different types of cute maids. And as you can plainly see, we can all appreciate some pretty babes. If you're looking for some nerdy crossover action, Future Zoologist provides it in spades with their piece of Ponder, TP, Chaos, Heaton, and Dulu, spectacularly portrayed as Marvel characters. Are you nerdy enough to recognize them all? Cubed up and ready to go, please just pretend like that was a phrase, it's Ponder fan art by Wormadesh on Instagram. What the fuck is this? <laughs> She's like, you won't fit on my hips! Meanwhile, Fiend is like, silently raging. Perfection. And for a couple cute pieces, we have some adorable chibis with stone and some aspirational babies, both by Gato Especial 05. I stand little sweethearts with octo friends and adorable chibi artwork. We're gonna be big and strong like you, miss. Right, Tony? Tony's like, those are big ass shoes to fill, boy. I don't know. Not the right month, but tricks, it's always the right time for Ponder Sprocket by Anrilo on Instagram, giving Fiend some well-deserved head pats in this lovely triangular piece. Look at how the heart bubbles balance the pose. Glorious. For some adorable original character fun, look no further than Tea Party by Smeargle Shiny. Because sometimes all you need in the day is some sweet little character pieces and cookies and tea. And we'll end everything off with whoa, Amidst the Sakura Blossoms, a lovely anime-esque ponder sprocket by Shortcake Liz. Will this be the day you confess your love? <sighs> If you like any of these pieces, please don't hesitate to give some love to the artist through their links I've provided down in the description. If you've got fan art of any of my characters that you'd like to submit, send it to EmptyComicsFanArt at Outlook.com, also provided in the description for your convenience. Don't forget to provide a link to your socials so admirers can find your work. My links are also down there if you're so inclined. And with that, uh, end!